All right, there's something I should have put on these notes and I didn't, and that has to do with what types of sides will actually create a triangle. You should have learned this in geometry, and the rule you learned in geometry was that in order for three sides to form a triangle, um, you must be able to add two of the sides together, and it will be greater than the third side. For three sides to make a triangle, the sum of two sides, usually I just go with the smallest ones to test it, the sum of the two smallest sides has to be greater than the third side so that it can reach across the top of it to make um, kind of like a roof over the top of that side. Imagine, for example, if we had the lengths 2, 2, and 5. The lengths 2 and 2, if we put 5 across the bottom and 2 and 2 on the sides to try and make a roof to create a triangle over the top of the 5, they're not going to reach because the largest number they add to 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So that's not going to make a triangle. There would be a big gap. Okay. Another way that um, we end up not having a triangle is one of the possibilities when we're working with a side, a side, and an angle. If you remember from geometry, side-side angle is not a valid way to prove triangles congruent. And the reason for that is that there could be two possible different triangles with the same exact side, side, and angle. This is known as the ambiguous case because we don't know exactly how many triangles there will be or what the situation will be without testing it first. Okay, let me do a quick sketch of what our no triangle situation would be like. Didn't get a very straight line there, but I guess it's okay. If this is angle alpha, then over here we would have side A. And then let's just call this side B for now. Of course, this could be side C. And really, this could be any angle and any side across from it and then any other side that's next to it. Okay, so don't get too stuck on the letters alpha, a, and b, because they can be used for any letters. Okay, if a ends up being less than b sine alpha, then there will be no triangle. a will not be long enough to reach to make a triangle, just like we were talking about here. Okay, so watch for that with your SSA because you don't want to um, start trying to solve a triangle when it's not solvable. It's better to test it first and know that at the beginning. Okay, another situation we can get with SSA is actually to get exactly one right triangle. If that happens, we would have A equals B sine alpha. The reason that will happen, if I sketch my triangle here, here's my right angle, here's alpha, here's side A, here's side B. Think of this as a Sokotoa problem. I have alpha, I have the side opposite alpha, I have the side that's the hypotenuse. Well, which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine, of course. So if we do sine of alpha equals opposite over hypotenuse, and then cross multiply to get rid of that fraction, we have B sine alpha equals A. Look, that's the same exact equation I just wrote there. A is exactly the right length to come down and make a right triangle. So when A equals this, it's the right length to make a right triangle. Going back to what we just learned, if A is less than instead of equal, it's not long enough to make a right triangle. Okay. The next situation we want to talk about is the possibility of two triangles. Um, this is actually true for all of these situations, so I forgot to say it in this one. But if A is less than B, that's important, we'll look at that, why that's important in just a minute. Then, and also if A is greater than B sine alpha, then it will make two triangles. The reason is that we would have our alpha and our beta here. But this time, A is too long to just come da straight down and make a right triangle. So instead, in order for it to fit, 
we either have to go that direction, and there's A, or we have to go that direction, and there's A. And so we either have this triangle with alpha A and B, or we have this bigger triangle with alpha A and B. We just happen to have this triangle that's in between them if we draw both of them in the same picture. Now we need to talk about some other geometry in here that will come in handy when we're solving these later. Remember that two angles next to each other like this is going to add up to 180 degrees. That's important to know that those two angles will add up to 180. Okay. The other thing that is important to know is that since this little triangle is made with one length A here and one length A there because of the two different places we can put A, that makes those sides congruent. And if those sides are congruent, it's an isosceles triangle. And if it's an isosceles triangle, then the angles are also congruent. So this angle here will be congruent to this angle here. And that's going to come into important play when we are solving these two triangles. Okay? The last situation is just if A is greater than or equal to B, then it's just going to be plain one triangle. Because if A is larger than B, so there's B... And let's make sure we make a side where A is longer. It's not going to be able to come back and make the two triangle option. It can only extend out this way. And so there's therefore only one option when A is greater than B. So these other three situations are when A is less than B for these three things, okay? Alright, this probably seems kind of confusing. Let's do some examples to try and figure this stuff out.